when we started, it was about, you know, uh, technical abilities, but also a lot about having a huge uh, musical culture. Because when I started, I would play eight hours a day as I was like any other employee of the club. I would play eight hours a day, six days a week. So of course, when you play so many hours, you need to know tons of different types of music. So I really know dance music from the fifties until now. So I, I, I played when I was younger, I, I played, uh, disco parties. I played funk parties. I played soul. Uh, I played rock parties. I played new wave. Um, you know, I would play student parties, gay clubs, uh, uh, house parties, techno raves. Like I, I played every possible hip hop, as you know, you know, I played a lot of hip hop nights, all of this is like a huge mega library in my head when I make music. And then from that, I became a producer. I've learned how to produce, um, but I was a DJ first. So now it's a different time. So I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just different. So now if you want to be a big DJ, you need to be a producer. Otherwise, you're going to be a resident DJ. And I have huge respect for resident DJs because I, I think, unfortunately, that today resident DJs do a bigger job culturally than superstar DJs. So, yeah, I think, you know, we were all about musical culture and technical abilities when, when I started. And, and, uh, now nah, it's just all about a different type of technical ab abilities, you know, the production abilities. And this is what makes you be a big DJ. So you see kids that are learning how to DJ in front of uh, 50,000 people. It's, it's true. It's, it's uh, what well, it happened with Martin Garrix, you know. Uh, I met Martin before he was even in age of performing as a DJ. And he was already an amazing producer, you know, and, and of course now he's killing it as a DJ, but he, he, he had to learn in front of thousands of people. That's a little bit crazy, but it's, it's just the way it works now.